this town were a sandwich, then crime would be the lettuce. Shrivel, repulsive by itself. But take it away and the whole damn system falls apart. Sure, everyone at the potluck loves the meatballs and devil eggs. But in the end, the onion salad is always the last man standing. Never been much for the food metaphors, but... When you crack a case like my last one, they'll cake your mind like scrambled eggs on an antique frying pan. Not coincidentally, I was mulling over the difference between simile and metaphor when she walked in. She wasn't the smartest dame, but she had a hot case, and legs all the way up to the ceiling. I never missed a person in my life, but sympathy pays the bills, so I let her kick around. My father and brother, they went on a fishing trip last Sunday, and they never returned. Call the police. I'll be 250. They didn't tell me where they were going, and I need a man with more persuasive quality. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but if it really is, this one says we will not be found 200 times over. I'm afraid all the persuasion in the world won't help you find these boys. Why not? I need more. Did they talk to anybody the day they left? The landlord stopped them on the way out. But he's always hot and bothered about something. Nothing unusual, though. I'm on it. The way some dames glide over evidence twists my stomach. But if I were getting paid to tell people what they already know, they might call me a psychologist. I don't know much about the mind, but I do know that it takes more than a coat and a cigarette to keep warm on a night like this. When I'm warm enough to think, I remember how much I hate talking to landlords. They're probably all friends. Hey, mister! Can I help you? Heard you lost a couple of tenants recently. Why don't you talk to me about it? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. What's it to you? D.B. Jones. Private Eye. Dame comes in my office the other day. Tells me you were the last one to talk to the boys before they went missing. I'm a holiday boys? A rowdy bunch. Always listening to jazz music and staying up late. Let's see ya. Last time I saw them, I reprimanded them for smoking that reefer stuff in my building. Pressing cats like this for answers is like making a souffle during an earthquake. But it was my only lead, and I wasn't getting anywhere with the Girl Scout routine. Now listen, pal. I need answers. Now see here, young man. You want to find them boys, you best get yourself a map. It hit me like a bad hangover. The holidays must have made at least one stop before their meeting with the fish in the sky. I headed to the local map store for a stakeout. Judging by my new friend's demeanor, I'd have a better chance finding answers around that joint than in Mr. Landlord's diary. Stakeouts aren't cakewalks, but fortunately for me I've got a lot of time and a great recipe for patience. Several servants of patience later, a sly looking character shows up outside the store. He bums around a bit before some goon walks up and gives him a shake. The goon has a truck, and the truck has boxes. He puts three at the feet of the first lug before he jets. I wait a few while Sly Guy moves his gifts inside, then move in to give the place a shakedown. When I was sure no one was watching, I moved in on what looked like a piece of metal lying among the footprints in the snow. Snatching it up, I saw it was a can of lunch meat, something like a school kid might have in a sandwich if none of yesterday's dinner went untouched. Needless to say, weird cases like this make my headache, but some chump with a club thought he'd help it along. You really gave it to him, Ralph. Yeah, I think the cat needs an operation. He'll live. Let him rot for a few hours. New teeth aren't cheap, but neither are answers. Sadly, the exchange rate is getting worse every month, and I want to make the most of the few real pearlies I have left before closing up shop. <laughs> Rope, fortunately, is at an all-time low. Most folks wouldn't figure getting caught would take them exactly where they wanted to go. But then, most folks wouldn't figure me a private eye. Whether I liked it or not, I was heading straight to the bottom of this case. And I had a feeling I'd be in pretty bad shape when I hit it. It was some kind of warehouse, and whoever owned it didn't mind working in the dark. Boxes of junk piled against the walls, floors that hadn't been swept since the resurrection. It looked almost as rotten as it smelled, and I felt just as rotten sneaking around in such a crummy hole. A map pinned to a support beam caught my interest for a moment, before spying the real prize. 
some odd-looking contraption standing by itself in the middle of the room. The blind toddler couldn't have built something scantier. Tubes coming out every which way, water all over the floor, and the smell of a thousand rainy days filling the air. Upon closer inspection, I saw that a tank at one end of the machine was half filled with rank-looking water, and at the other end, a can filled with what looked like a dog's breakfast. As it was all coming together, disaster came to break up the party. Looking for something, Mr. Jones? Is this what I think it is? Mr. Jones, if I was to tell you what you already know, people would call me a psychiatrist. Well, I don't know what to believe anymore. Well, I believe I have a gun, and you need to tell me everything you know. Well, it's real simple. You've been harvesting the ocean life and turning into your luncheon meat. And paying off the tourism board to keep it quiet. Very impressive. I'm actually quite surprised. Those holiday boys didn't even get as close as you. But as you can guess, turning ocean life into luncheon meat has saved me a fortune in the food service racket. And I don't need any pesky snoops in the mix. So is this the end? <laughs> Mr. Jones, now why would I rough up a man just to kill him later? You don't have anything more on me than the next guy. But it does seem that my boys need to teach you another lesson. See you around, Mr. Jones. Some might say I was lucky to get out of there alive, but if you've ever been beaten twice in a day, you'd know it's nothing to live for. However, I got what I wanted, and while the cops had a reputation for blowing me off, the guy at the papers didn't. I knew a man like you could get the job done, Mr. Jones. But how will I ever repay you? You've brought the whole system down on its head. Not quite. Well, what do you mean? Well, you're still here. How did you know? You told me that nobody knew where your father and brother were going. They could have been anywhere. Yet somehow they ended up in the middle of an ocean life harvesting racket. Same racket that you handle. See, I figure... Your brother and father were getting curious, so you decided to show them the real deal. Gave them the map that you knew would have them sleeping with the fishies. Where's your proof? I've only got enough to prove it to myself. Your goons have already gone down to your place, and I can't pin you for anything other than a check for 500. I'll be in touch, Mr. Jones. You know what they say, what goes up must come down. Just like a reverse toaster, only instead of bread, there's crime. And instead of a reverse toaster, there's this town. I guess that one was a stretch, but I've earned the break. Because every time someone thinks they picked every onion out of this salad they call a city, I'll be there to prove them wrong.